Hi, everybody. In this quick video, I'm going to discuss the role of ChatGPT in your CS class. Now, recently, I had the privilege of attending a conference, and it had a whole bunch of people who were college professors uh, in university, high school teachers, uh, industry executives, and everyone there was talking about ChatGPT. And I wanted to share with you what everyone there was talking about and some strategies on how you should handle AI in your classroom. Because let's be honest, it's out there and it's never going away. So we're gonna start off by talking about what the industry experts said and what their thoughts were on ChatGPT and AI in general. How, does, um, how do tech companies use it? And how do they think students should use it in school? Um, I'm then gonna talk about, well, what is cheating now? right? Cheating needs to be looked at, needs to be redefined. And how can you quote unquote stop cheating in your classroom by using Codeo? So if you'd like a copy of this slide deck that I'm going to be showing you during this quick video, you can take a quicker, uh, quick picture of that bit.ly link, or you can just go to bit.ly forward slash you teach GPT. Okay, so as we were talking to the industry experts from Google, from Microsoft, from Amazon, from Oracle, we were talking to them about how did they use AI in their respected companies. And the one thing that we learned was that almost all of these companies across the board had some sort of predictive AI that their programmers were using when they were coding, okay? Um, it wasn't an open source program, it was using in-house databases, but Google has basically predictive AI that they said can basically predict the next line of code for their coders, okay? Similarly, Microsoft has something called Copilot that does the same thing, all right? And Amazon said that they used something called Code Guru, which can spot bugs and review the code for their programmers. Now, the point is, is that everyone is using some form of AI in order to help their programmers. So why shouldn't your students be using something to help them as well? So industry experts, okay? Here's what they think you should talk to your students about. Because one of the things I thought was great was a lot of them said that this chat GPT that's currently out there, it's more gimmicky um, than it is real true AI. It's more of a clever way of, of displaying search results. And we're about to find out that not all searches return really good information, right? So one of the main um, executives from Oracle suggested you should try to break ChatGPT with your students. Put it up there, show them ChatGPT, and try to ask it questions that will stump it, that'll show that, guess what? It's really imperfect. And actually, it's pretty dumb, okay? Now, when your students are gonna ask ChatGPT for code, because that's really what we're concerned about here, the coding aspect of ChatGPT. Well, all of the code that ChatGPT uses comes from GitHub. And anyone who's programmed before knows that there's a lot of really good code on GitHub, but there is a lot of terrible code on GitHub, all right? It's an open source platform. Anyone can put code on GitHub. So that was why the tech companies do not allow AI generated code in their programs at all, okay? They would never, Google would never allow something from ChatGPT to be put into a uh, software program that they're gonna be putting out there for the world to use, all right? So, you know, just because Google won't do that doesn't mean it's gonna stop your students from not using ChatGPT to get code. So you're gonna see on the next page, on my next slide, I should say, that a lot of these executives say that ChatGPT or AI should be used, but it should be documented that it was used. And one of the other things that you really should talk to your students about is what are those legal ramifications of using code that ChatGPT writes? Who owns that code? Do you own that code because you asked the AI to write it for you or does ChatGPT own it because it did the coding? So these are just all very interesting questions that you might want to bring up with your students, all right? Because here's how I think as CS teachers at this level, we should be thinking about ChatGPT. We should be treating it like a modern day calculator in your classroom, all right? When you're in primary school, when you're in K through six, okay, 
they teach you addition, subtraction, multiply, dividing, maybe some powers, square root, right? And eventually someone comes up to you and says, you know what, your brain power is so important. We can't waste your brain power on such simple things as this. This calculator is going to do it for you. You're going to focus on learning formulas, okay? And then eventually they give you like a scientific calculator and they say, all right, just put in the numbers. It's going to learn the formulas, all right? And because what you need to do is be focusing on other things, critical thinking skills. And that's really how all of the people in the tech industry are thinking of something like chat GPT, that at the lowest of levels, it should be treated like a calculator. Students still need to learn the basics of Python and Java. Okay, they need to learn block-based programming. They need to learn how to write people programs. These are all really important things, right? But at some point, you're gonna see when I get to my next slide that actual coding skills is not gonna be what tech companies are looking for in the future. So what are tech companies gonna be looking for in new hires, say, in five years? Because that's when your you know, students are gonna be out there looking for jobs. Well, all the tech companies unanimously said that in five years, reading code will be more important skill than writing code, okay? Reading code will be more important than writing code. People are gonna be able, people are gonna have to be able to just look at code that's written by an AI and just be able to go through it and know exactly what that code's gonna do. Reading the code is gonna be the most important skill. And then the other skills that they wanted in new hires are all things that you do in your basic CSA or CSP class. We develop critical thinking skills, right? We make little critical thinkers out of our students. They learn how to solve big problems by breaking them into smaller problems. They have reasoning skills. This was huge. Need to possess grit. They say none of their new hires have grit. They all quit, they give up, but then this, the ones that they hire that do have grit, they're the ones who go the farthest, okay? And also the ability to learn from your failure, okay? The power of failure through failure, is how you learn how to succeed. All right, so just notice up there, it doesn't say high level coding skills are needed. So yet again, another reason why maybe you should allow your students to use ChatGPT in the classroom with a couple of guidelines, okay? One of the things at this conference that I went to that really was disturbing to me was a lot of college professors just don't think their kids are cheating, their students are not cheating. And, and they just, you know, they use this analogy up here that, you know, they tell their students that by cheating, you're only cheating yourself. And one day in a job interview, they're gonna ask you a question and you're not gonna be able to do it. And it's all because you cheated in that CSA or CSP class or that college CS1 or CS2 class. And they tell the teacher, you know what, teacher, you're right, Mr. or Mrs. Teacher, I'm not gonna cheat anymore, please. All right, I literally have a bridge to sell you in Alaska to nowhere. All right, students are going to cheat. They don't care about the future. They just care about passing whatever class they're in now. So please don't do the head in the sand thing. Your students deserve better from you, okay? Use the skills that you have and the tools we're gonna give you to kind of call them out and force them to document when they're quote unquote cheating. So. What is cheating? Okay, my favorite thing that I heard at this conference was remember, it is not about the crime. It is about the cover up, right? And that is so true. Sh students should be allowed to use ChatGPT. I just told you all of industry is using AI if they are struggling, but they need to document that they used it. Now, Codio will be able to tell you if your students are using outside help, and I'm gonna get to that at the end of this. But for right now, they should have to document that they used it. And then you as a teacher come up with your strategy as a teacher on how you're gonna use this in your classroom. Maybe if a student uses ChatGPT and they tell you they did it, the highest grade they get on the assignment is a 70, all right? But the students who write their own code get up to 100, okay? Now, what's better? Having a student use ChatGPT and tell them, telling you that they used it and submitting something or doing nothing or cheating and trying to cover it up, okay? So that was one of the things. Now, how can you spot if your students are cheating on their code? Well, in Codio, they released a new feature called Codio's Behavior Insights. 
And I'm going to discuss it and show it to you right now quickly. Some of you are using it. Some of you don't even know it's out there. Okay. And it will allow you to spot when a student is using chat GPT or cutting and pasting code from outside sources. Now it's not just gonna say it's using chat GPT, but it's gonna provide you with analytics, data analytics that show you the student is probably not doing their work. All right. And if students know that you know that they're cheating, quote unquote cheating, they will be more likely to just document whenever they're using AI. So if you go into Codeo, into your basic settings, right? You will notice that you have to turn on the behavior insights in basic settings right here, okay? And then when you go into an assignment, you will see a column over here. And this is the behavior insights. When you click on this, it'll pull up the behavior insight dashboard. Now, it's gonna tell you the time spent, the rate of edits, Coding versus debugging time, history of external paste. Did you hear what I just said? History of external paste. Any code that your students paste in that is not part of our assignment in Codeo, it'll let you know that they did it and then tell you the exact code that they did paste in there. And then insertion versus dele uh, deletions. Now, if any of these are suspicious for the student, it'll throw that particular thing up there right off the bat, okay? And then you can go deeper into it. So let me show you what I mean by deeper into it. So right here is uh, the traver, uh, traversing array assignment that we have in this CS pathway class here at the University of Texas. And I'm gonna click on my behavior insights for this particular student. And you notice the very first thing it shows you is, okay, this student has pasted a string of characters from an external source, maybe normal, if they were pulling material from a previous instructional assignment or you allow the use of cited code and submission. Now look at this, you can click on the bar in the chart to see what text was pasted. So I'm gonna go up here where it says there were six pastes made on March 26th at 11.26 a.m. And when I click on it, here is each one of them. And when I click on it, it shows me the, the code that they were cutting and pasting from an external source, okay, over here, six lines of code, okay, three lines of code, three lines, four lines, four lines. Remember, we have code playback built in. So we're already recording all the coding that's going on. So this is just a tool that you can use that not only you can see how many external uh, pace they have, but exactly what they were, okay? Maybe it's okay, maybe they're not. That's why you as the teacher can look it over. All right, so one other thing I want you to do, this new feature in Codeo, it's brand new and they want your feedback. So you notice up here in the top right-hand corner, there's a blue provide feedback button, okay? And I want you to just click on it and provide Codeo with feedback. What do you think it is? Is it horrible, a one, or is it great, a five? And then just put in some text here. Let them know how they're doing, because by you guys telling us what to do, we can share the information with Codeo. And here you can provide the Codeo directly to them so we can make this behavior insight tool the best possible tool to help you stop plagiarism in your classroom. All right, so I hope I gave you a lot to think about. How should ChatGPT be used in your classroom? Do you wanna go all out war or do you wanna kind of go side by side and figure out how to make it a part of the learning experience? If you have any questions as always, reach out. So long.